Welcome back, guys, to another episode of Decentralized Chain with me, Faraza, bringing you the latest news, reviews, and blockchain tech. So today we are going to be looking at GoChain. So GoChain are looking at providing an Ethereum-based smart contract blockchain. That's right, guys. It is a fork of the Ethereum code base. They are looking to be faster, more secure, and greener. In addition, developers will be able to take their dApps and smart contracts, lift them off the Ethereum network and shift them straight onto GoChain without any extra effort or coding needed. So let's actually have a look at what their unique selling points are. 10 times more decentralized. So those who might not know currently, in terms of how ultimately blocks are mined, it is predominantly in those geographical regions where electricity is at its cheapest. So if we have a look geographically, China mines around 75% of all blocks. Now that in a way doesn't really come across as being decentralized. In fact, it is quite centralized. If something was to happen economically in that region, it would have a very devastating effect across the entire Ethereum network, as well as Bitcoin for that matter as well. Now here the idea is that GoChain will do away with the proof of work consensus algorithm, which obviously requires a computational power in order to solve a mathematical puzzle to generate the next block in the chain. Instead, they are gonna move on to what they call proof of reputation. So the idea behind proof of reputation is that those who want to validate on the network need to build up a reputation for themselves i.e if they're reputable then they will be allowed to be validators or signers of transactions on the network so therefore doing away with the whole entire proof of work consensus algorithm now how does that actually work how do they get selected well initially GoChain will work with 50 organizations which will be geographically placed i.e. it will be a forced decentralization and they will pick those individuals to be part of that network, i.e. to be the nodes that will validate all of these transactions. Now, going forward, what that means is that they will hand over the voting rights back to the 50 and those 50 will then be responsible for growing that network. For example, if we have a look at one of their flows they have, and I love flows within their white paper, what we have here is the 50 are known as the signers. So they're the ones that are gonna sign and validate all the blocks and transactions that occur within the network. Now, if somebody or an organization wants to become a validator within the GoChain network, they send in a request, so being the requester, to the signers, and they send in their DUNS number. So the idea behind a DUNS number, it stands for Data Universal Numbering System, and it is basically famously known for being produced by an organization called Dun and Bradstreet. So Dun and Bradstreet basically create uh, business financial reports, okay? And they're very well known throughout industry in terms of providing that level of detail about an organization. Now, what will then happen is that the signers will send a request to Dun and Bradstreet requesting the info for this particular Dun's number. They will then review the report, review the business information that's provided to them, and then have a vote internally as to whether they are gonna accept this organization into the network. And once they're accepted into the network, then that network grows, and then you have an additional node added on to do the processing. So that is what they call their proof of reputation. And so by having that, you can already see what's happening here, is that they are doing away with the proof of work consensus algorithm and then purely just looking at having those who are reputable to validate that. The idea being that those within that network are going to be putting their reputation on the line. So therefore, hopefully you would think that they won't do anything untoward when it comes to validating and verifying the transactions. Now, moving on, we then also have 100 times faster. So by 100 times faster, you can kind of already see how that all plays in. By moving on to the proof of reputation algorithm, the idea here is that because they've done away with the proof of work consensus, there's no need for all of that computational power and resource behind it, which to a certain extent can also act as a hindrance because it requires an amount of time in order to validate that block 
and then once the block is validated then the transaction is validated and then they can move on to the next chain in the sequence here the transactions are done by those who are trusted so the idea is there's no need to solve any mathematical computational puzzles anything at all like that it is literally validated by those who are the signers of the network then we move on to what we have is the thousand times less um, consumption of energy so what does that actually mean then so how are they consuming less energy well it's all related if you haven't seen or if you haven't guessed already the idea is that they've moved on to proof of reputation they've moved away from proof of work so therefore they've moved away from the need for all that computational power in order to validate a node because it is done by the validators of the network just those 50 and actually you know the way they say that they are more greener is if you have a look at it in terms of power consumption the report suggests that somewhere in the region of a million households in the US could be powered with the amount of energy it takes to validate on the proof of work a consensus right so because they're doing away with all of that there are much more greener organization as a whole as well so if you like your reducing your carbon footprints then certainly this is you know a winning point for the greens now moving on let's have a look at their roadmap in terms of how quickly they can get this to the masses so if we have a look at the timeline we've had the proof of concept which was established back in december that's been complete they've also had a private sale um, back in February I haven't been able to find out the exact details of how much was sold because obviously that plays into the overall um, token sale but in addition I don't quite know what the bonuses is, is either because ultimately if the bonuses are quite low then certainly it helps reduce the risk of dumping when this hits the network equally it's difficult to tell whether those bonuses have been locked up or not as well as part of the overall purchasing process then we've got in March testnet live and available for review now currently um, there are claims that their testnet is able to achieve in the region of a thousand transactions per second that's quite impressive but uh, there's no testnet at out at the moment publicly available however it is been sort of mentioned within the telegram group that around the 23rd of March or somewhere within that date period there will be a test net ready and live and available now that plays into the actual public sale which is in April so ideally if they can get that prototype out early enough then certainly there's a significant amount of proof behind their claims in being able to be that much faster and then we've got the public network launch in May so everything is very close closely uh, closely locked in in terms of the number of events that are happening there's always some there's something happening every month so you know once you get news like this it can do well for the overall price of the token as a whole and then they're talking about towards the end of the year the next generation smart contracts now what they mean by these next generation smart contracts is that they will provide the ability to be able to actually amend pause and terminate these contracts but you know let's wait to see exactly how that plays in later in the year now moving on let's have a look at the team so in terms of team we have got a number of individuals we've got Kelly M Nicole MBA so experienced business leader and business development so they run companies in excess of 2 billion um, previously so certainly they have experience in knowing how to run an organization I don't necessarily see any blockchain experience per se we've got Jason Decker who's the COO so once again similar nine-figure hedge fund so they know pretty much the sort of stock market more than anything else this is what's really coming out to me as being a hedge fund manager overall then as we move down we've got the chief technical advisor so Travis over 20 years of experience developing high throughput high scale applications now it is said that this um, the founders uh, within GoChain um, have previously developed um, a serverless platform in the past and I believe they are called iron.io where they claim that they're able to process somewhere in the region of a million transactions per second so certainly it seems like they have the knowledge in terms of how to push that type of throughput via a serverless ecosystem 
We've also got Brooke Hansen, who's a social media director. So it's always good to see that they have somebody within that space looking to promote, looking to engage with the public and grow the awareness. So that's really important overall. So, you know, it doesn't necessarily sound like she has a full blown marketing background, but ultimately this really does help overall. Then as we move down, we've got a number of software engineers. Now, once again, I'm not seeing anybody specifically with blockchain experience within here, although these developers do seem to have many years of development experience behind them. Now, as we then move down, we are moving into the advisor space. So we've got Chad Arimura, who is the VP cloud at Oracle. So once again, you know, it's all very cloud related cloud infrastructure types of individuals we've got VPs of sales we've got founders at ether sport so once again I'm not seeing anybody significant here that stands out as an advisor yes these guys clearly are at the top of what they do within their respective spaces but no one really seems to be shouting out as a blockchain expert here at the end of the day and you know that certainly helps to open doors within that space to grow partnerships not to say that they can't get partnerships through these advisors but it's something that you should really bear in mind now let's move on to the actual token metrics clearly that's what we're all waiting to hear whether it's a good investment or a bad investment so if we have a look at the token supply we have 1 billion GOC tokens they're looking to raise a soft cap of two and a half thousand and a hard cap of 26,500 Ethereum. So that is 50% of the supply. So once again, I like the supply. I think that's a decent supply to give out as part of the pub, uh, as part of the crowd sale. Um, in addition, if we kind of have a look at where some of that is, we've got a team uh, which take around 10% of those tokens and they're lock up, locked up for six months. So that's good. Partners and advisors, they also have a six month lock up as well. So that's that's really good as well. You know, it reduces any type of dumping effect and also, you know, it takes away any red flags for me. Um, and then the rest of them are, and the rest of the tokens are really going to be used around foundation, marketing, and they've got a reserve which is locked up for one year as well. So I really like the sound of that overall. And then they've got the Go Chain fund as well. Now, in terms of what that equates to in monetary value, so we can all relate, well, if I take the current price of Ethereum as it is today at Sunday 8 11 p.m. on the 4th of March, Ethereum is priced at $865. So that equates to a rough hard cap of just under 23 million in terms of what they're looking to raise. So, once again, not a bad hard cap at all in terms of price. What does that mean per token? Well, we're looking at roughly five cent if we round it up. So five cent a token overall. So that's the overview in terms of looking at the timeline, the token sell and the team. In terms of how this pars up as a radar chart, and as you all know, I like to produce a radar chart because it gives me the visibility I need to be able to judge whether it's something that I want to invest in myself. I tend to stay away from percentages, but you can gauge a percentage from this quite easily if you wanted to, as all of the individual areas are marked out of five. So if we look at the project, I've given it a three. There are many blockchain projects out at the moment. So, you know, once again, I'd, it is, I would like to say, a saturated marketplace, but also, you know, there are others who are also claiming to do bigger and better. And ultimately, all I'm seeing here is more of a a scaling platform is just making making ethereum that much faster what does work for them though is the whole backward compatibility the idea being that you can just lift and shift off ethereum take your dApps and your smart contracts and run them on the go chain blockchain so i quite like that and i think that's quite a novel and good idea in terms of prototype i've given it a zero um ultimately they do have one it sounds like they have one certainly from their telegram but I'm not seeing anything within that space as of yet, and we're a good few weeks away from seeing a prototype. But once again, if I do see a prototype and they're able to back up their claims, then certainly I'd be looking to push this value up. The team, I've given them a three overall. They're all very well experienced. They've run organizations. They've been part of large organizations. They've got significant software developers behind them. I'm not seeing anyone that really jumps out at me. I'm not seeing anyone with significant blockchain experience either within that space. Similarly for the advisors, I've given them a two. So once again, the advisors are good in terms of where they're coming from, but I'm not really seeing any massive door openers for me within that. But once again, guys, this is my own opinion at the end of the day. 
token metrics i really like the token metrics overall i gave that a four it, they're certainly certainly not a money grab the hard cap overall is quite low i like the token supply i like how much they're opening up to the public sale as well and i also like that you know what's available for the advisors and the team are locked up in terms of hype i've given the hype really a one at the moment because they are quite early stages if i have a look at their twitter we can see that they've got roughly around 200 followers they've got a facebook group as well once again not many very small within that space if we check out their reddit i'm seeing about nine readers in total not much going on within the reddit space but once again you know they are quite early on i suppose within their space but they do have someone who's their social media director so i would have expected a bit more of a push a bit more of a drive in order to get those numbers up much quicker so back here we go again so you know as you can see guys the project really needs to a bring out a prototype and if they can claim and back up that 1000 transactions per second just before token launch then you know i i would seriously see this being as a good I would say medium to long term hold, especially the fact that, you know, they're able to provide backward compatibility to Ethereum. Advisors, once again, I'm not seeing much in terms of that space and either they have some significant partnerships to help grow themselves as a uh, as a cryptocurrency or they bring on some additional advisors that actually have some reach within that space as well to open up those partnerships and once again it's hype now sometimes hype comes in two folds you know you could see this as an under the radar ico or you could see this as an ico that you invest in but generally doesn't have enough awareness in order to help drive the volume that you need on the exchanges to push that price up Anyway, guys, I hope you've enjoyed the review. Please do leave any comments below. If you have any, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, let me know what it is you didn't like and what I can improve for the next episode. See you soon, guys.